Welcome back to our literary analysis of Romeo and Juliet. Uh, my name is E.J. LeBlanc, and in this audio lecture slash uh, Camtasia video, what we're going to do is we're going to review what we covered last week in week one. We're going to talk about what we're doing this week in week two, and uh, I'm just going to take it by the hand and show you uh, through the course as we do that. So in week one, first of all, we introduced ourselves and uh, told you about how I was in the Navy and things like that. Then we talked about the history of tragedy. Uh, we talked about Aristotle. We talked about uh, catharsis. And then we talked about the element of tragic figures. Uh, and we used that information to determine what tragic figures were in our own definition. Uh, using our own definition, we're saying that tragic figures are people who are, one, noble, two, suffer a reversal of fortune or endure uncommon suffering, and then three, endure that suffering with dignity, and then four, inspire others, including yourself. Now, what I want you to do again is to have found a real live person that you know and write a 1,500 to 2,000 word essay on this topic while it's covering the history of tragedy, identifying tragic figures. Hey, that whole thing's worth 100 points. Make sure that you get that done and have that turned in already uh, into the week one drop box. Uh, then we talked about Arthur Brooke, who uh, unfortunately uh, in 1564 died of a shipwreck. I'm not liking the way this video is panning out right there, but he died in a shipwreck. And, uh, and basically, he wrote in 1562 the tragical history of Romeo and Juliet. Speaking of Romeo and Juliet, I made a timeline for you uh, in this of the shooting of this video. It's not all the way complete yet, but it will be by the time you're taking this course. Uh, feel free to use this uh, timeline as a guide throughout your course. Uh, I also provided another synopsis for you there. Uh, we talked about the characters of Romeo and Juliet. There's a character map right there for you. Uh, and you're going to use that information to create your own story map. Now, so again, worth 100 points and you need to go ahead and do your very best to show the connections between the setting, characters, themes, and events in this story of Romeo and Juliet. Be creative in how you're expressing those visual connections and how you're making those visual connections. Next for Unit 2, uh, we're going to be talking about Acts 1 through 2 and love. Uh, we're going to go into detail on Acts 1 and 2 and actually read them word for word in the text. There's a whole bunch of different ways to do that. Uh, you could watch the whole entire play of Romeo and Juliet on YouTube if you'd like. Believe it or not, this was a made, the, the video that I presented here was a major production in 1954. And it's funny because they wore all those tights, but who cares? Part 1 of 13, that's all 13 parts of the movie. That's 13 10 minute parts of this whole movie that's on there. All for you, and it's all for free. So here's your first assignment of Unit 2, and it's to respond to a discussion thread. Here's what it says. In your response below, I want you to tell me something you learned from last week's unit, and I want you to ask the class a question about the unit, uh, either one that you think everyone should know, or that one that you think that you're confused about genuinely. Uh, so again, you're going to tell me something you learned from last week, and you're going to ask everybody in the class a question, and then Basically, what you're going to do as soon as you post what you learned, you're going to respond not only for your own post, but you're going to answer other people's questions in the thread. All the questions need to be answered uh, in the discussion thread. Uh, we're going to read Acts 1 and 2 uh, online. Notice how I haven't broke up here. Uh, and then you're also going to give me another discussion thread and when you're going to give a one-sentence response of, so, using only one very well-written sentence, what is your definition of love? Uh, you're going to use that kind of as a, a segue into writing your What is Love essay. Uh, again, it's a 1,000 word double spaced paper. Uh, make sure that you use the rubric to figure out exactly what is required and expected of you on the rubric. Uh, then you're going to write a love poem. Uh, a lot of people tell me this is one of their favorite things to do in this class because, hey, you don't have to worry about spelling, grammar, punctuation, what kind of poem it is, no haiku, whatever. Have fun writing the poem. Also, notice that you could organize a poem any way you want. Have fun. But, you know, that's why it's 50 points. Uh, the thing I'm going to be grading you on is, one, is the, are you writing in a way that's soulful? If the poem's superficial or shallow, I'm not going to give you full credit on it. Also, uh, I want you to find three different types of figurative language. I want you to use them in your poem, and I want you to label them correctly in your poem. I've provided you resources throughout this unit on uh, uh, 
different types of figurative language. Finally, uh, you're going to take uh, a quiz, and the quiz is on uh, going to cover Acts 1 and 2 only, and uh, none of the previous stuff is going to be on the quiz, uh, the only things that are within this unit. And so go ahead and click there whenever you're ready for it, and also you're going to make sure that you uh, to make sure that you've turned in everything that you that you need, go ahead and look over week two, uh, what is due for week two, and whenever you're ready to turn in your what is love essay or your love poem, go ahead and turn those in to the what is uh, what is due week two drop box, which is just click there. Thank you so much.